be with us as we as we go night after night on in this meeting. May your presence be here, Lord. The great power of the Holy Ghost. May they not even be able to pull the stake Monday. May it continue on, Lord. Oh, let thy spirit come down. Help us now as we worship thee. In Jesus' name, thy son, we ask it. Amen. It's just a little bit muddy out here tonight, isn't it? But it's a lot cooler. That's one good thing. <laughs> Very happy for that. And it's not. Indeed, I need to realize that I had to cut a few days off on the meeting, but I'm glad that Brother Hillholzer had, had uh, come to help. And to, I want you, everyone, to come here and, and he'll certainly do good for you. He was praying for the sick while I even in the ministry. <laughs> And so that's the same man. This is a, and, uh, so that's very fine. And then here's the reason. I really come. You don't know what I got to do. And if I leave here on Sunday, I got one half a day to do it. And then drive 3,500 miles to get into the meeting and have a meeting in between there. I can imagine. See? And, it's, uh, and I asked for the more if we could uh, leave just a couple days early like this. And he said, certainly, Brother Brandon. And that's what we... What I love about Brother Moore and the church here is real Christians and understanding and things. And it, uh, I tell you, that's that's worth a lot to know that you got a friend that's sticking closer than a brother and people who uh, understand. And I will sure, I'd love to stay down here a month with you. <laughs> I'd like to do it. But I, I can't do it. After all, friends, i just tell you something that you don't know. Have I gotten a black eye for coming down here? See, that's right. I had 100 meetings, more than 100 meetings, that called in for the two weeks I've been from the convention, and people who were places where I've never been said, if you'll just come for one night, Brother Van, and it's been trying for me to come for 10 years, month after month, for 10 years, then see me come around and come to Shreveport, where I've been the biggest part of my time, and put up a two weeks meeting. They said, what is it down in Shreveport? Well, what's so important down there? <laughs> and it was so important down in Shreveport. So, you know, Jesus and his ministry here on life, he tried to kind of share the things around with everybody. That's the way I try to do it. And I know we've had a wonderful time. I have. I had some of the best anointings and one message especially that the Lord gave me over there. And the other day, I have never had anything to strike me so in my life. A message to the church. A lamb and a dove. Don't forget now, last night here on the platform, by the way, before I stop saying that, Brother Moore and I are to be in California together right away. And maybe, God willing, when I start to California, I'll drop back by and give you a little night or two as we go through to California. Well, that kind of even up the score a little bit at every time. And how many understand and are praying for him? I just wish sure. Thank you, Brother Sister. That's fine. That is. I love you for that. And now, uh, uh, Brother Moore is going over to California. We're going to the International Zuzu Street Rally. This is the 50th year. And I kind of got it on my heart, kind of like a revelation. The 50th year of Jubilee year of Pentecost. And while I was at the West Gates a year or so ago, the Lord just seemed to put it on my heart, and I announced it out before several thousand people, and it just caught fire. And now the Angeles Temple is going to be the great Zuzu Street Rally. And... Uh, this coming uh, September the 10th, I think it is, 16th, 16th, it begins. And I have the privilege and the honor of opening the services, the first two services. Brother Oral Roberts, Tommy Hicks, and all many is going to be there in this great rally. And there will be many from different parts of the world will come to this great, that's the beginning of Pentecost in America. The old Azusa Street, and this is 50 years, the Jubilee is astounding. You can go free now or stay back on it. And so we're going over there. And then Brother Pinoza, who was with us down in Mexico a few months ago, with Brother Moore, Brother Brown, and all of us down there, well, we had a marvelous time in the law. Right, and yeah. Brother Pinoza was my interpreter. Yeah. Such a lovely brother. And he was so nice to me. Yeah. And he wanted to know if I'd come over and hold him a month's meeting. <laughs> a month's meeting. Well, I, I just can't do that. If my meetings are set up on a big scale, see, well then it would be different. I might be able to save money. But where it's on a small scale, not too much finance included in it, no radio programs, no nothing else, 
I feel free to go just where the Lord will lead me. See? And drop in here and stay a few nights, over there a few nights, down here a few nights, in a church, wherever it might be, it doesn't matter. And I uh, don't need nothing but just uh, what clothes to wear and say, by the way, some lady gave me a suit of clothes while I was here. And I sure appreciate that, my dear friends, ever who it was, the lady back in the back. God bless you, sister, for doing that. I certainly do appreciate it. Angel name it last night. And, and uh, I, I do thank you, and that's the way my clothes come, that people give them to me. And, uh, and remember, I don't mind if they've been used. That's all right with me. I was raised to that. Uh, <laughs> so I, I sure appreciate it. And I, my Lord didn't have a place to lay his head. That's right. That's right. And for uh, the Lord has given me a little place to live there and my little family, and we just happy, and as long as we have not to, I don't have our family, even if we could afford it and get a big love offering, we could afford to go a little in luxury. I don't do that. No, sir. If I have just a little bit over, I put it in foreign nations. God knows that to be true. And I, now, because I'm the steward of that when it's handed to me, I've got the answer for it at that day. And I want it to be that way when I. I want everything clear when I come down to the river. I don't want no trouble then. <laughs> if there's any trouble, I want to settle it now. <laughs> That's right. Right now is when I want to settle up. Because that morning, I want to have my ticket in my hand ready when she pulls out. I want to have it all fixed up then. And I'm trying my best with all that I can, brother, sister. And now there's many good Baptists and Presbyterians and all here. And I, I appreciate your efforts in coming out here and helping me uh, with uh, win sinners to Christ. And now, I may not be able to speak like your pastor. I haven't the education. I haven't this ability. But you bear it with me But what, well, what God has given me to win sinners by. And I, I appreciate that. I want to show you an answer to prayer. How many of you here last night? Let's see your hands. All over the building. Well, that's fine. Now, I want to say this. That you remember there was a lady somewhere. I believe the first woman or something. Anyhow, somewhere along in the tape will show it. I asked a woman who was full enough for some time with, with excess fluids in her body and told her that God had touched her somewhere. And I said to her, Lady, would you be so kind to do this or something on that matter? They just repeated to me called the scene of the dream to me. I said, Will you measure your body tonight and put it on a string and come back tomorrow night and show us how much it shrinks? In a long time, this woman been there. How many remembers me saying that to the woman? Right well, she brought the screen. Here it is. And she shrunk a little over an inch and a half overnight. Spent that about 18 hours. Praise the Lord. Is the lady here? Is the woman present that was healed last night? Uh, right here. Here's the lady here now. Let us say praise the Lord. For God bless you since you're far years ago. This will be a memorial that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. How thankful we are. And I'm thankful for your loyalty to you, sister. Uh, it just keeps going down. It's on and on. You get well now. The Lord Jesus. Now, you say, look at there. An uh, inch and a half in about 16 or 18 hours, I suppose, from the time she left here, when she measured herself to come back. And now, when Elijah saw a blue cloud about the size of a man's hand, he said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Get ready. So, oh my, I pray that this week that it will be such a marvelous time to crutches and things will be hanging over these here posts around here and God will be glorified. I just trust that it will. And someday I hope to come to Freeport in a meeting like this where I'll just stand and pray for the sick as they pass by. I want to do that so bad. I don't want to. But yet, I, my ministry has been given. If I start into a meeting and don't start it, all right. But when it once starts that, I can't cut it off. Then. Every time I meet a person, there it is again. There it is again. It's pulling from everywhere. And that's the reason my ministry has never been a good success in America. But, oh, how the Lord has blessed the overseas. Of See, in America, the people are taught, you've got to lay your hands on them. Or you've got to anoint them with oil. Now, that's what they believe, and there's no way of ever moving that. See, it's already been grounded into them. That's said, you can't do nothing about it. Yeah. And someday, if God willing, I'm trying to get out of it right now, and ask them the Heavenly Father, and by a vision, he told me about a tent, that for the morning, I'm going to California now to see the setting order the first time, to put a little place there where we can pray for the people, and I get away from the people just a minute, so that I won't feel that pull when I'm praying. 
That's what makes me weak. That's what takes me from the platform early. Don't lay it on to my kid. It's not my kid. He stays with me like six closer than anything I've ever had in my life. He knows just exactly what to move. If it wasn't for him, I'd be in the insane institution because he let me stay. I trusted it with preachers one time, and you hear it out of off the field and never got over for two or three years. And my boy is loyal to me, and I appreciate that. And so he, he sticks right by me. And so uh, he stands on the platform and watches me, and he sees me get a little white around the mouth. He says, Daddy, I don't care if there's 50,000 there. If you don't come, I'm going to put you across my shoulder, and you will come. So that's what his mommy tells him. She won't let me go to the meeting, hard it out. And she said, Billy, you go. I know what will happen to Daddy. You'll come back in all tore up and everything. So you go right there. No matter who says not, when you see he's got enough, get him off the platform right then. So I appreciate that, my son, said Paul. And now, friends, my ministry is this. My ministry isn't to touch people. And I find out that it isn't too much for the American people. But overseas, the only thing they have to see is one supernatural thing performed. Every one of them will lay right every the crutches down, get up out of their wheelchair, go on home. I, if they have had people to walk along for a while, they'll get strength. At, at Durban, South Africa, where one person, that supernatural gift was in performance, I think, no, I beg your pardon, I think it was about four. Four of them. And one person on the platform, I turned and made a congregational prayer, and Brother Bosworth, just as honest a man as I know of in the world today, estimated 25,000 outstanding healings in one prayer. Seven truckloads of crutches and braces and sticks and clubs that they walked in on was picked up off the ground when the meeting was over. They didn't want to That's all they used. Just, just sit once and said, yep, he's God, he lives. That's all it is. It's that simple. But we're so educated, all we got to have is our way, see? That, that's where we need to decide. That's what, uh, we know, I'm an American too, and it's the lovest land in the country. Although it's backslidden state, this is my home. I love it. But yet we are, oh, we are the most needed missionaries in this country than anywhere I know of in the world. That's right. Missionaries are needed worse here. Just one supernatural there. And all them heathens just sitting there, don't even know which is right and left hand, stripped naked, not a stitch of clothes on them, sitting right there looking, just look up through mud in their hair. And if you just act like you love them, they'll just cry. And then they see that supernatural reach out there and call a heathen by his name. Tell him what's wrong with him like that. My, they just, that, that, that's all they want to know. That's, a, that's good enough. If you say he's here, that suits me. And they just lay it down and walk away. Just that simple. But when we start to lay ours down, we say, oh, now I wonder, let me take a chance and see what if this is going to work or not. Uh, it won't work. That's just all. It's, you missed it right there. And so I, if God helping me in America from henceforth, from after a bit, we get to the big end, I'm just going to pray for the sick people and go ahead while I'm in America. And then just as the Lord will lead me to do certain things that way, and then leave this for the overseas. Because in there, it went hundreds of thousands of souls, you see. And here, it doesn't do much good. So now, I'm going to read some out of the Word. We're going right straight into it and expect God to give us one of the greatest services tonight that we've ever had. Amen. 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 And I trust that tomorrow night, uh, when the brother walks to the platform, that the Holy Spirit just sweeps over this building, and, and everything, every sick person in front of the tent will be healed, and outside the car, too, will be healed. Now, how many loves him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind? Amen. That's wonderful. Now, be ready and be in prayer now while we read some of this blessed old Bible. Over the book of Kings, we read this. And he said, Open the window, each one. And he opened it. Then said Elijah, Shoot. And he shot. And he said, This is the era of the Lord's deliverance. May he add his blessings to the reading of the word. The era of God's deliverance. Shot from a bowl. Now, you know, no matter how mysterious it seems, God always keeps his word. No matter how unreasonable it may seem to people, God keeps his word. Right. And right. Yeah. if God makes a promise of anything, God will keep that promise. 
You and I make a promise. We, we break it because we don't mean to have to do it. But sometimes circumstances causes us to do it. But when God, being uh, infant, then he knows all the future from the beginning. And he, can't, he don't make a, a promise unless he, he knows what's going to happen. And he always keeps his promise. Sometimes it seems like it's, it's ridiculous the way that he would go around about to keep his promise. But God always does it. How strange that the people might thought in the days of Noah, when he was building away on an ark to save himself and his household, that there'd be rain come down out of heaven. But God rained it just the same. And I think of Moses. How that Moses standing up there on the mountain by the side of this burning bush, he lost all hopes of freedom. Didn't seem like that the freedom that the people he so gallantly stood for one time was ever going to happen. But in the light of God standing with that burning bush, everything in him changed. And I think it's the same today that many of us lose the sight of freedom. I think here, here's a little boy sitting before me, probably an infantile paralysis, little arms twisted up. I, I look at a, a lady here with a white cane oh sitting in front of me, oh uh, a, probably a blind woman, lovely young lady laying here on a uh, little cot. And maybe many of you there with cancer, heart trouble, and, and diseases that, that's going to kill you. But you lose all thought of freedom as soon as the doctor says it's incurable. Why, brother, if we'd ever come in the presence of God like Moses did, why, it was a revolutionary to him. Why, I, it was revolutionized when the, in the light of that angel of God standing there on that mountain that day, everything that he wanted for thought never would happen come to be a reality. And I think of men and women today would ever step into the light of the Holy Spirit under the unction of God's Spirit and the light of God's Word. Everything that God has promised will illuminate to you and be real again. Why, the reason Moses failed in the first place, here's what was the matter. It was the lack of having what the burning bush had. <laughs> That's right. And what's our failure today is lack having what the Holy Spirit has. And the Holy Spirit has all good things for us. And if we receive the Holy Spirit, then all things are possible. And it's not only possible, but promised to us. Jesus said, ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. That's right. If you abide in me and my words in you, yeah. ask what you will, it'll be given to you. See, when we step into the light of God's Word with the unction of the Holy Spirit to shine the light on it, brother, the impossible becomes little things then. God asks us to believe His Word. He sends the Holy Spirit to energize that Word when it falls into us. When the Word is being preached and the Holy Spirit brings the Word, He energizes that and flashes the same light of God's blessed promise God said, I have remembered my promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I'm sending you down there to do it. See? Then, when God's word and promise become enlightened by the presence of the angel of the Lord, stop Moses now. He's on his road. And God always keeps his promise. And in our text tonight, it's a very uh, outstanding text to me. That when they had a great line of kings since the death of Ahab, and Elijah had told him of how he was going to die and what God was going to do because he was wicked, and how the Jezebel was going to be fed to the dogs because that she did the evil thing that she had done. And remember, my brethren and sisters, you reap what you sow. You, that's, that, that's God's law. That's God's law of nature. You reap what you sow. So now, dear people, you're here at Shreveport. Let this be a warning to you. If you believe me to be God's servant, listen, the best thing for you to do around life, tabernacle, and everywhere else 
is keep an old-fashioned prayer meeting going and keep the unity of the Spirit, keep looking out and watching for the coming of the Lord. Keep all the worldliness out of it, no matter how bad it hurts, circumcised by the Holy Ghost to cut away the worldly things. Now begin to see a lot of worldliness creeping into you. So now get that out. No matter how bad it is, uh, like Tabernacle I'm talking to you, now you Baptist brother talk to your people over there the same way. But I begin to notice there's something different. It ain't the same like Tabernacle I used to come to. And I want you to remember tonight, you keep that old-fashioned prayer meeting. Keep the old-fashioned Holy Spirit calling among you. Keep the world out. That's right. Seal Christ in. And you're letting down in prayer some way. Just remember, as you sow, you reap. Just remember that. That's You've got one of the best churches I've ever walked into in my life. Of any world on any continent. Life Tabernacle is one of my favorites. It breaks my heart to see you letting the world leak into you the way you're doing. So don't do that no more. Snap out of it. Pray out of it. Yeah. And let God come back and take over. Submit yourself to God. And get the old-fashioned blessing back again. And report you dear, dear Southerners down here. Who are the finest people I ever met? I don't say that to compromise with you. I say it because I love you. If you want to get some real good treatment and real good old-fashioned hospitality, come to Louisiana. I mean that from my heart. And I tell you, don't let the world creep into you. Don't let the world get into your churches, brother. Pray it out. Fast it out. And so God comes down and takes a hold. That's right. Keep the joy of the Lord among the saints. Keep them prayed up and guard every little place. If Noah seen a leak in his ark, why he put some pitch in it. And so that's about the best thing I know to keep the leak out. The world out is to stop up the leak. It's the best thing that I know to do. Only one way to do it, that's prayer. Prayer stops the leak. Prayer changes things. Now, a long line of kings that come down. Ahab, the wicked one, had been shot by a bow and killed. And Jezebel was thrown out of the room as she tried to, to make love or vamp uh, Jehu when he drove down. And he had the eunuchs to throw her out the window into the street. And did you know what? Let me tell you, Life Tabernacle. Seeing some of you women begin to wear your makeup and stuff like the rest of the women of the world. That really killed me when I walked in here the other day and saw that. Look, there's only one woman in the Bible that ever painted her face. You don't paint your face to meet God. You do to meet man. And the woman that did that, God fed her to the dog. So when you go away and after service, God turns you over to some dog meat when you see anybody doing that. Now, now keep away from it. Shun the very appearance of evil. You may think I'm giving you a scorching, but brother, I believe it needs it down here. If something is, is wrong. There's something. I don't want you to get angry with me. I'm your brother. And God's going to make me answer before you. He has a day of judgment. Right. And the whole Pentecostal world, if they do lay down, don't you do it. You stay true to God. Pray up. Live right. So think yourself with God and His people. And come out from among the worldly, ungodly things that the Bible says. The Holy Spirit calls the people out. No matter what your neighbor does and how good she is, what this day is so associated with that unbelief, it will leak right out on you. Amen. Come out from among them. Be separated, says God, and I'll receive you. Right. That's the reason it's so hard to have a tent meeting down here. That's the reason it's so hard to have a meeting of any type. It's because that we let out those things. We ought to have a real meeting here. Sure we ought to have with such fine people. And you preachers, if you don't tell them that God has mercy on your sinful soul. Right. Sure. It's something wrong. And you've got to get the world out before Christ comes in. He just won't associate with unbelief and things of the world. Now, look, friends. Down on they come along after Ahab, a borderline believer. All the way down. After this Ahab was left, then another one taking his place, another one, till he gets down to King Josh. 
was king during this time. And he was a lukewarm, borderline preacher, a believer. Any way that people wanted to do that was all right with George. Oh, he'd taken down a few of the high places and where the heathen worship was. And he'd done a few of these things, but yet he departed not from the sins of his father. Like that, just any way that people wanted to go that way, he wanted to go. Now, isn't that just exactly like preachers today? The way the congregation wants to do that, the way the preacher preaches to them. I want to tell you, a God-sent, Holy Ghost, born preacher won't compromise with any congregation. Could you imagine John the Baptist when they brought out a lady that night and had what John walked right to his face and said, it's not lawful for you to have it. That man had the Holy Ghost. He didn't compromise. He told the truth. And what about it now? It's all over. What will it be at the day of judgment when I head of John the Baptist rose up before Herodian? What will it be then? Brother, if you're ever going to make a stand for God, make it now. This is the time. Now is the time when we need of it. Now is the time when the church is waiting a thousand pounds on him. After all these great miracles and signs and wonders that God has sent men across the country doing, and yet the church is in a forest backslidden state I know of in years. Right. I'm preaching to Pentecostals. Amen. When I first come among your groups ten years ago, it looked like a church, but today it looks like the world. It's the truth. Something happened somewhere. You got to wear any better clothes, got to make a little more money, and it just made a sap out of you, that's all. Now you ask the truth. Right. You're trying to you're trying to act like the rest of the world. You just take the day as a compromising time. That's true. You paint your steps red once and see if your neighbor don't paint his steps red. Sure. You want to run around half the church a little feather up in it and watch all the women come to church a little around half the feather up. Right. Yes, sir. Oh, they want to look like one another. It's a matching time. You know that's true. It's a matching time. Amen. That must have went home. Right. <laughs> right. Listen. That is true. I'm going to tell you, my brother. I don't care whether my shoes match my trousers or my trousers matches my coat. I want my experience to match God's body. That's the matching body. You want to match something, match your experience against Paul. Amen. That's what we need today. Lukewarm, blown away, tossed about. Wind, 
Clouds without rain. Tossed about. Never learning. Able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Don't be tossed about by everything. Don't be tossed about what you see on the television. Why, some Christians today are staying home on Wednesday night to see the television. You know, that's true. Well, you know, that's the gateway of all the Hollywood out there. Why, it's nothing else but a bunch of big prostitutes and some of the fuckers. Look on the police records. I have them. Police records for them movie stars. And you want to act like them? What happened to Christ? What happened to the saints of the Bible? You're talking to Paddle Esther. Hollywood, dress like Hollywood, act like Hollywood. The reason that he's got a lot of Hollywood evangelistic preachers jump up and down on the platform and spend two hours for an offering. We ought to get out of that self and trust God. Take out our faces and pray. Pray out of the Bible. Crime magazines where those 
most famous women out on the street of prostitution at fifty dollars a night, living with men and things all up and down the coast, and then run out there and some other four or five husbands. And you little girl gonna pattern yourself after that? When the man out there is supposed to be such movie actors and so forth, when they live with women so much to the natural course of life that changes it, they become perverted. And then you want to pattern yourself after that? The scatter Calvary where a man hung on the cross and died. The only real example that has ever put in the world for human beings to live by is the man Christ Jesus. Amen. Right. Then we call ourselves Christians and harmonize our souls with such as that. No wonder the world is sin. No wonder something's happening. No wonder you can't have soul stirring meetings anymore. Because the world is in. Borderline. Halfway wishy washy. Oh my, what a condition. In the face of all that now, to show you there's a hope, this old King Josh heard that the prophet was sick. And he went out to visit him. And when he went to visit him, he didn't come here ever. He would come with respect. He walked up, he had enough God about him to know that he must visit this prophet with respect. So he walked up and wept over him. He said, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And when he did, see, that's the way you want to get something from God. Don't come around a meeting like this to make fun. Don't come around to pack some kind of a tail from one place to another. If you do that, you'll never get no word with God. Don't read the Bible to fuss about it. Read the Bible to live it. That's right. right. So then, when he went down there and he seen him, he respected him. He said, My father, my father, the uh, chariots of Israel and the heart. In other words, my, my father, you're worth more than all the chariots of Israel and all the horsemen of heaven. How too late! I say tonight, Though Elijah was considered a holy roar, a fanatic by the modern world, yet his presence in that nation was worth more than all of the horses and chariots they had. And I'll say tonight that a good old fashioned Holy Ghost tank meeting is more to protect us than all the atomic bombs that we have created in a million years. Amen. Respect. He didn't go to say, now, hey, Holy Roar, you know what my pastor just told me about you? All right, he didn't do that. He walked down with respect and he wept over him. And because he come and approached it reverently, God had respect to him. God said, now, so Elijah, rise up. And Elijah rose up. And they were just about ready in their backslidden condition to be besieged by another country, the Syrians. They were coming to get him. And Elijah knew that, but because this one man humbled himself and come down before God and said, Oh, my Father, how we need you, God respected it. And he respected Elijah, and God respected him. And if you respect God's Bible and God's Holy Spirit, he'll respect you. Right. Yeah, Amen. Right. Don't try to contradict it or say it isn't so. Just believe it. That's all. Watch him now. And Elijah said, go get your bowl. And he put an arrow in it. said, open the window towards the east. The east is the way that Jesus will come. And he said, now watch. Now I want you to put the air in the place and draw back just as far as you can. And he did. He said, shoot. And when he shot, what happened? The arrow went out. He said, get the arrow. When he come back, he said, strike the ground. And he struck the ground three times. And the prophet was wroth with him. He said, why would you strike it more times than that? Why don't you do something else about it? Strike it more times. He said, you struck it three times, but you only had three victories. He, that's just about what the things happened tonight in the Christian church. We have struck the era of God's deliverance, he said it was. God sent the era of deliverance to us. The era of deliverance is the Holy Spirit that's been sent, shot 
from the bow of God's love. Right? When he turned it, eternity was pulled together by the cord of love. God shot the arrow of delivered into the church on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Amen. And the church was given in her hand. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The church was given into her hand the arrow of God's deliverance. Amen. The Holy Spirit will deliver the church out of any kind of the chaos it could get into. So what did they do with it? They picked up the era and they struck three times. Left the backslidden king. They struck the era with, well, we'll build a church. That's all right. We'll teach theology. That's all right. We'll teach psychology and have an organization. That's just about as far as you struck. They struck short of many blessings. And the church tonight, hear me, the church tonight is still striking short. The church has struck short of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's struck short of the liver from sin. It's struck short. Oh, you say, I go in the church. But oh, you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost to take that old temper out of it. It puts you on a dress and makes you act like a lady. It makes you quit your smoking, drinking, lying, stealing, and everything. But oh, you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's separation. It's a liberty from the pain of the world. Amen. It makes you love God. It makes you go to church. It makes you worship Him. It makes you tell your neighbor about it. It makes you live about sin. Hallelujah. But the modern church has struck short of it. Oh, they just struck that we got a church. We got a good teacher. We got theology. That's about as much as you know about. Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. Hallelujah. God sent the baptism of the Holy Ghost and put it into the hands of the church. The heir of God delivers to deliver from sickness, from sin, from weary, from trouble, from worldliness, from everything else. Yeah. But we struck short of it. Amen. Thank you, that first bunch of Jews didn't. They struck it for everything God had for them. They had all kinds of signs, wonders, miracles, divers, gifts of the Holy Ghost, everything. They had it. But we're striking short with it. The baptism of the Holy Ghost in the last days is coming to the Gentiles in the Western country. And God shot the air of to us, and we have just about struck it long enough to make ourselves, oh, I'm a sinling. Hallelujah. I belong to church of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That don't do you a bit of good. Stop. Brother, it's not an organization that God said strike with. It's given to each individual to strike against the powers of the devil. church and we join the church and we think that's all right. That's not all right. Brother, don't strike short of nothing of God's blessing. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever. Strike it! Yeah. Amen. Amen! Don't be afraid. God said so. I'm the Lord and he will see. Strike it! Right. God said so. It's the era of deliverance. It's brought into the church tonight. We talk about a historical God. That's what's the matter tonight. The church has been taught of some historical thing and not put it down to a present day. What good is a God of Elijah if it isn't the same God tonight? What good is a God of Moses that delivered the Hebrew children uh, out of Egypt? What good is that God in the history if he isn't the same God tonight? What good is a God that walked the banks of Galilee back under and opened the eyes of the blind, made the deaf and dumb to speak and hear, healed the sick, the lepers, raised the dead? If he isn't the same God tonight, what good is he? That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Right. 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 Amen. Amen. What good is he? What good does it do to give your boys the education of some great all the history, learn all the theology, teach them the Bible? Then if you turn around and tell that same group of men that the days of miracles is past, and don't think, what good does it do in your history? What good does it do to give your firm orthodox seed the best you can give him and let's ask him up in the case you don't let him out? That's the same way it is today. With all of our education, with all of our theology, with all of our church denominations and things, we fasten people up and tell them that the days of miracles is past. There's no such a thing. 
same today. They can't be healed. There's no such a thing as the baptism of the Holy Ghost. All this stuff they say is nonsense. What good does you preach them the Bible if you're going to keep them caged up and say that God left us many years ago? If he ain't the same God and delivers back there, and if, now if he was back there, he isn't worth nothing to us. He's a dead feature. He's some historical something. How are you going to get a man warm by a painted fire? If a man was freezing to the death, he'd say, Well, brother, look at this nice fire burning. It burned 2,000 years ago. What good is going to do this man standing here freezing? Sure. If Jesus Christ raised from the dead and said, I'll be with you always to the end of the world, what good does it do to teach him some historical fact that he can't prove that he's the same today? That's right. Amen. If he isn't the same tonight in everything he was back there, he isn't God. That's right. That's right. Amen. The air deliverance is given to the church but worldliness, unbelief, superstition, and everything else has creeped in, brought worldliness to the church, brought fusses in the church, organs, different denominational bearers. One say, I'm this way, I'm that way, I'm a Paul, I'm a... Oh, my. That's what's the matter. But brother, so yes, the air of deliverance is still with mercy tonight given to the church. What we ought to do is pick it up and strike for the glory of God. That's right. That's right. And every divine blessing that God promised is yours by faith if you receive it. Do you believe it? Amen. I believe it in the light of God's word that God promised you that he'd do a certain thing. And he met Moses up on the mountain. And Moses had tried with all these doctrines, with all he know about the Bible, all his mother had taught him, all the teachers had taught him, and everything he tried to go out and do it in himself and fail. But one time when the angel of God come down and God spoke in the power of the Holy Spirit, God's word become real. When the Holy Spirit revealed it to Moses, he was a different man. I tell you, my brother, sister, tonight, you might have thought this might be fanaticism or something, but you once stepped with God and take his promise and reach right out there and say, Now, Lord, I believe that the Holy Ghost flash over that once I take place. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be a different person. In the light of God's word, May you live and believe and serve the Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, this is the night. This is the time when man must press to the kingdom. This may be the last time that man here or women will ever hear. This may be the last opportunity that death may take them before morning. This may be the last time that, that some people will ever set or hit me. Oh, God of heaven, speak with you, Lord. Oh, may the Holy Ghost take these few broke-up words and sink them down into the heart, and then flash the Holy Spirit over the top of them, that they'll come to life and live anew in every heart. Grant it, Lord, tonight. Get glory out of the service to save sinners, call home backsliders, and heal the sick. We ask in Christ's name and with our heads back. Lord, I ask you, is there a man or woman in here that is guilty of sin? I don't care how long you belong to church, whether you ever did or whether you did not. You're guilty. And you've got enough real respect for God with everybody with their heads bowed. Eyes closed. Would you raise your hand to God and say, God, by raising my hand, I'm guilty. I won't forgive you. Will you do it? God bless you. God bless you. You, 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 you. Yes, my, my. Many. Way over the building. God bless you, young man. God bless you, young fella. God bless you, young lady. God bless you, sister. God bless you, lady. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. The Holy Spirit is here. Speaking. Bringing the glorious blessings of God down. Somebody on the outside. God bless you, young lady. See your hand. God bless you, sir. See yours. That's right. Way out. Anywhere else. God bless you. Way back in the corner. That's wonderful. Somebody else. Brother Brandon. I know one thing, we got the faith back, we got to know this, it might be a little rough and handle rough, but brother, we're living in the last hour. We got to quit this year, hand the gospel and his gloves on. Make me a little bit thing to join the church. Jesus said, except the man be born again, he can't even see the kingdom of heaven. A born again person is God's sainted child. If you're not in that state tonight, would you be honest enough with God to, to raise your hand? Somebody has. They've been 20 people or more. Raise your hand. 
for somebody else that hasn't read. God bless you, sir. God bless you, young man. God bless you back there, brother. Yes, sir. That's fine. God bless you, that little lady. I see you as surely God does. I know he does. He even knows every sparrow. You say, Brother Bram, I'm guilty of the sin that you've preached against tonight. I'm guilty of staying home from my church and looking at television. I'm guilty of reading old lusty magazines. I'm guilty of looking at vulgar pictures. I'm guilty of watching women on the street that's immorally dressed. I'm guilty of all these things. Oh, I'll just turn my head and been a preaching gentleman lady. Are you guilty? Then answer me before God by raising your hand. Then I'm guilty. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. That's on his heart. That's on his heart. Certainly. God will honor that. 10 or 15 more hands went up. Yes, sir. Guilty. I'm going to pray and ask God, and you pray and ask God, that he'll take every bit of the guilt away tonight. Our Heavenly Father, oh, God, Lord, I've tried this letter night with all my heart. I see the sinking sand. I see Satan setting that trap here for these lovely people. Oh, God, please somehow inject love into their hearts. So let them know that I'm, I love them. And I'm trying with all my heart to tell them what is truth and what's right. And many, yes, dozens, have raised their hands tonight as they're guilty. God Almighty, would you turn a pen of this soul down? No. He that cometh to me, I will know why I pass out. I pray tonight, God, that salvation will streak through every one of these hearts, and they'll be made whole and go from the tabernacle of a tent tonight that never no more indulge in those things. When the heathen that present themselves on the street half naked, made that Christian gentleman by the Holy Ghost turn his head. When the old television begins to move in, all kinds of old silly nonsense stuff of sinners that will go to hell someday about they repent, come on to influence and they'll throw their weights against the Christians of God. May the Holy Ghost speak to their hearts. They remember that night of the tent. When the uh, condemned you for that, and you raise your hands and may they never be guilty again. Grant it, God. Now, that the people might know that you're still alive. That the people might know that we're not talking just to be talking. That we're not trying to introduce something we don't know nothing about. I uh, thank thee, Heavenly Father, by your grace that I do know you in the power of your resurrection. I've made many mistakes in my life, Lord. I'm ashamed of it. In many places I should have done and places I ought to have went. I've went different and done different and I'm sorry of it, God. And I repent with all my heart and ask that you'll send me, Lord, to the four corners of the earth and let me, while my life is and I'm still strong, let me go forth and preach the gospel like never before. Oh, God, I renew my battles with you here before these people. Oh, I pray that in Christ's name that you'll anoint me, Lord, with the Holy Ghost, that you'll show signs and wonders and signs in my body. Oh, renew the vision, Lord. Bless this life tabernacle and sponsor this me and the Baptists and the Methodists, the Presbyterians and whatever that's gathered here tonight. May their churches be on fire and the old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival. Strike near and three port may the air of God's deliverance fall upon this group tonight that it will absolutely revolutionize the whole street port and its rounds about with an old packed and holy ghost revival. Let it, Lord. Bless our gallant brother who should stand here tomorrow night to finish on this meeting. Oh, Father, send the Holy Spirit to make a living motion tonight that you're living and live forever, Lord. In Christ's name I have this. Amen. Hallelujah. We find many people who can understand why we are so happy.
sing and we shout. Some don't understand it, I mean. But we're filled with the Spirit, there isn't a town. And that's what's the matter with me. Oh, that's what's the matter with me.
old fashioned, and I raised on cornbread and black eyed peas, and used to stop the kettle, and mom would make a pie or something, they don't stop the icing, and you know, you know, us kids get in their hair and over our eyebrows and everything else. But you know what I think tonight? The Christians need a good old kettle stop the time. <laughs> Just give them your eyebrows and hold it. Amen!
that Jesus was promised, they would come up from the grave again. Then now it's still by the sign God gives sign. Everywhere God is a sign. You know that? Where there's God, there's signs. Signs, these signs shall follow them that believe, said the Right, that's right. That's right. Amen. Signs everywhere. Yes. Everywhere there's signs. We shouldn't speak at you, but God gives them. That's his grace. Right. He gives them. We were speaking at you, and then he wrong. But when he just gives them by his grace, that's wonderful. And there's a sign here that we're going away from here someday. We're going to come up from that grave again. Oh, there's an empty grave in Jerusalem. Yes, Amen. And then up there, he's wanting to come back and visit with us. There's a sign someday that they'll be made flesh. Although their body's laying there, they can't go on and beat them up. But yet, there's a corporal body of one who raised the dead. Someday, they're coming back to earth again. Oh, I want to be with us. Amen. Job said, though the skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, my eyes shall be one and not another. Right, he knew what he was coming forth because God had promised him. We got signs tonight. Um, a missionary was crossing the country one time, and his infidel was with him, dying. He said, All oh, you guys coming here talking about something you can't see. Well, that's nonsense. So there is no such a thing as that. So I'll see why you don't get that yourself and go to your home. The missionary never said a word. That night, the major camp. Next morning, he got up, and the sun was peeping up on the desert hill, and the uh, man that was. Um, was the infidel when I said, Oh, Father Martin, he said, Say, there were jackals around here last night. He said, How do you know there were jackals? He said, I see the signs where he was. I said, I don't see no jackals. He said, There were signs around here. Well, I know he was here. He looked up at the sun. He said, Hallelujah. God still lives. I see the signs and he's still on his own. Amen. And tonight when Jesus comes here to save the sinners, and to bring forth his word and to show signs and wonders, we just shout the praises of God. Our Christ lives tonight. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, now the great strategic time is at hand. The time is at hand when I have witnessed to you with all my heart. I've tried with all my heart to correct and to exalt the kingdom of God and to bring down judgments upon the people. And they have repented, Lord. Many has raised their hands with honest confessions that they're ashamed of their sinful life. God, I don't believe one raised your hand that you didn't forgive. And now to show them that you're here, not that you have to anymore, but may you appear here in such a visible manner tonight that they'll see you be happy that they raise their hands to a God that lives. And when we're living in this great, strangest time, we look at the papers, we see the great army again coming up. We see the tanks, the atomic bombs. We see the end of the Gentiles. This is at hand. We see the world right. We see sin on every hand. It's time now. It's at hand. God, we're so glad that we tell our living God. We've got one who promises and right here with us, showing himself visible among us. And we thank thee for it. Will you let your humble servant by your predestinated gift? represents you tonight before your people. I pray as I humble myself before you in the name of Jesus, thy Son. Amen. <clears throat> uh, somehow I just, I just feel so good tonight of the glory of God being here. I wanted to see it break so bad before that. <laughs> All right. What was in prayer cards? Ours last night? Was that it? Ours? All right. I believe we call the last of them last night. Let's call the first of them tonight. All right, somebody. Now, if you're not here, we'll see first. and might not come back tonight. Anybody got R number one? Look at your prayer card. Yes, that's good then. All right. Come over here, lady. R number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's about a dozen for the first hands that was raised up tonight. Sometimes I do that, call how many get saved that night. I call that many to the platform. Many get saved. I try to do that if I can. 
asking God to give me grace. You say, well, I just want that. I have certain things to God. I say, now, Lord, if you will save 50 tonight, I'll call 50. And you give me strength for 50. And if you save so many, well, you give me strength for that so many. And I, 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 I usually call it, and I judge about 12 hands at raise to Lord. To make it positive, I wasn't overshot. Let's, let's see what was like 12, 13, 14, and 15. Let R, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Let them come. That'll make an even number. And maybe I might see someone outside. Be sure that I was honest with the Lord. Now, don't you love him? Isn't he wonderful? Now, listen, friends. While there, the ushers are down there, please, brethren. If you will go down the line and people up so they'll come to their numbers. Now, while they're doing that, how many doesn't have a prayer card? And you want Jesus to hear you, don't see your hand. God bless you. God bless you, honey boy. God bless you. All around this is where that's good. Now, you don't have to have a prayer card. You only have to have faith. Is that right? right. Yeah. You have to have faith. Yeah. That's all God ever said. Whosoever has a prayer card. So whosoever has faith, whosoever believes it. Is that right? Yeah. Prayer card don't have to do it. Prayer card just prays for the sick. Now, how many believe the gifts and callings are without repentance? The Bible says so. God has said in the church, God. Now listen, little children. Let me give you just a little warning here around three four. Be real careful in the days to come. Now, everything that shouts and praises God is not God. Cain did the same thing. But let it come from the Scripture. See? Let it come out of God's Word. Now, watch it. Because remember, when God sends a revival, hell sends one too. And when Moses and Aaron went down to defeat uh, the Egyptians, there stood uh, Jambres and Jambres too. Then they could almost impersonate Moses. Do you remember, they could bring diseases, but they couldn't heal diseases. There is no one can heal but God. God's the only healer. That's right. God's the only healer. That's right. Now, and the fruits of it proves what it is. See? By their fruits, you shall know them. Isn't that right? Now, I want you to love the Lord Jesus and all with all of your heart. All right? Now, i tell you what now. I just want to wait a few minutes. Or maybe, I believe I just pray for these people. They just pass them on to it and be all right. I believe so. Just let the lady come. Stand here just a moment. Now, just a moment. Now, lady, I just let you know that the anointing of the Holy Spirit is here. I want you to believe. Do you do it? Is this your first time ever being one of my meetings? No, you've been in the meetings before. But I don't know you do it. I don't know you. But if you believe God, that female trouble you, God will lead you. You believe it? God bless you. And heal her, I pray. Lady, I don't know you. God does. But that shadow of death of the cancer of God can't heal you. You believe it? You believe it? Thank you. Thank you. What if I told you later, without even praying for you, that God was there with a chair by you? Would you accept it? They go and believe in the healing Jesus. Go to the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you believe, lady, with all your heart? Thank God. <laughs> Let's say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you believe, lady, with all your heart? You believe God will make you well? Take that uh, diabetes. Wait, honey. You believe you do it? You believe you take it out of Amen. Praise the Lord. You believe? Oh, yeah. The Bible says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. How do you do, lady? Don't know you do it. You believe me to be his servant, God's servant? You believe it, that we need strangers one another. You think that God would, could reveal to me what's your trouble? You believe it could? Would you accept it as coming from God? Would you believe it come from God? All right. Well, the rest of you believe it? Well, if this, let's take the case of our Lord Jesus just for a moment. Let's take the case of our Lord Jesus. Jerry, he was sitting at a well and a woman come up here to the very same case tonight. See? Not that maybe the very same thing, 
I'm always, I'm just a servant of the Lord Jesus. And uh, you probably, I don't think you'd be a woman of ill fame like that, but it's, a, it's again a man and a woman. And Christ said that he would be with us to the end of the world, then if he is, it'd be a sign to the people that they don't have to worry. The very Christ that made the statement is here. Is that right? Will you believe it, audience? If the Lord will reveal to me something about this woman here, perhaps maybe more than what her trouble is, would you would you accept it then? Believe it all your heart? And look on me, little sister. Now this is a gift. It's just a gift of God. I have no way of knowing you know nothing about it. But you just look at me just a moment and let's just believe while I just talk to you. See? Now, yes, sir. Uh, you're in a dying condition. That's right. Because you have cancer. Not only cancer, but cancer has two of us, and they're both on your breast. That's right. You're extremely nervous, aren't you? And you're not from Freeport. No, sir, you're from Arkansas. That's right. And then draw the lead. Is that right? And go back to Arkansas and believe on the Lord Jesus. Hey, what is it? Yielding to the Holy Spirit. Let's just yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Yield. Oh, God, may our heart be yielded. Yielded to Him, Lord. Ready to Christ me. Amen. Our visions is what we can certainly. Visions doesn't heal. Visions only vindicate God. Amen. And His goodness. You believe God heals you the God better trouble sitting out there, lady? You believe it He'll make you well? If you believe it with all your heart, have what you ask for. If you believe it. Amen. <laughs> See? I doubt the lady. Do you have a prayer card, lady? No prayer card? Do you have a prayer card? You don't have a prayer card, do you? Yes. You have a prayer card? All right. Well, then you won't need it now. All right. You won't need it now. It's your faith trusting. If thou canst believe. Lady? Second lady from the end there, elder lady with a pair of glasses on looking this way, got low blood pressure. You believe Jesus Christ is here, you, sister? You sitting there on a pink cushion, looking at me with a spotted dress on. Say, look at Yes, you there. You believe Jesus Christ make you well? You raise up your hand if you believe it. All right, accept it. Amen. <laughs> see, how, see how unconscious faith is? The woman is sitting there thinking in her heart so much that she didn't even hear me talking to her. That's right. But to see God spoke to her. <laughs> Amen. If that ain't Jesus Christ the same yesterday and forever, I say not as the Bible. Amen. That's right. If thou canst believe, That's right. all things are possible. That's right. We're strange to one another, lady. Why, you look like a good, healthy person. i never seen you, but the Lord Jesus knows you, doesn't he? And you believe him? You believe me to be his servant? My lot of faith moving in that audience. So I hope you can keep that way. You're extremely nervous. Because you get, because you're suffering with trouble in your colon. That's right. It's a tumor in your colon. That is right. Isn't that right? You got trouble with your stomach, too. It's called upper stomach. That's right. Yes. I'm not reading your mind, but that's what the doctor said, so that's what it is. So you believe you're going to be healed now? Then walk on your own. In the name of Jesus Christ, in God's name. Amen. You believe it? Don't doubt. Have faith. How do you do? Are we strangers to each other? We are. I don't know. You don't know me. I don't know one thing that's the matter with you. You know that. Don't know it. Frankly, there's nothing. The only thing you're here for, you're standing for somebody else. That's your brother. He isn't here. He's north west of here, a place called Oklahoma, and he's an alcoholic, and you want me to pray for him. Right. Go on your own. Lord Jesus, save the man. In Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Have faith in God. How do you do? We're strangers to one another. I don't know you. You don't know me. God knows us both. You're here for me to pray for you. 
you got a growth over your left eye. It can't be seen right now, but it's over there anyhow. Isn't that right? And you got skin cancer on your face. Isn't that right? You won't get very far. Is that the truth? Then come here and I'll do it. Oh God, in Jesus' name, I pray that you'll take away this disease. I pray in Jesus' name. Have faith in God. All things are possible to them that believe. If thou canst believe it, the Bible said all things are possible. Are you believing that? Amen. I see two little children standing here. Right in here. Their mother's with them. They both got scientists. All right. You believe the Lord Jesus will make the children to be well? If you can, if you'll have faith and believe God, God will do it. Two little boys and little girls. Have faith, man, and God will grant it to you. All right. Will you, you believe, little sister, with all your heart, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? You do? I am a stranger to you. I don't know you. Never seen you. You sat in the choir, but this one. You're nervous, aren't you? And you believe that God will make you well? Believe that he'll make you easy? The other things, the desires you got for somebody else in your heart, that's right. <laughs> a woman lives across the river somewhere in Bolivia, and she, she got the uh, arthritis rheumatism. Is that right? Amen. You believe me to be God's servant? All right, then go and receive what you want to in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. God can bypass that operation, take a tumor right away without even an operation, make you well. You believe it? All right, then receive it. I'm trying to see it. Amen. I challenge the audience to believe. I challenge everybody to believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at the way. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Do you believe that? Pray. Go down. Have faith. Amen. You believe your high blood pressure will leave you with your. Uh, hand up, and you mean to do it? Yes. You mean to take the ring ring? You mean to do it? All right. Yes. What are you looking for? A little Mexican girl, I believe. Spanish? You mean to be God's prophet? Do you stand to your feet in this? Do you stand up to this? It's up to me. I always had success with Mexican people because they believe. Look over here just a minute. There's something around you. I've seen. Dark shadows kind of are You're praying. Only oh, yeah, what you're wanting is for somebody else that you're praying and suffering nervousness. Isn't that right, lady? If I tell you what you got on your heart, will you believe me to be God's prophet? You want to be saved and receive the Holy Ghost. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Let's come up here to the right now.
Well, I wouldn't do it for nothing in the world. I'd be aware that you're a key rider there to come to this office. That's right. So you know who you are. I thought it should come to the office. It's quite me. And remember, if I meet you at the day of judgment and you're the man, it's not my fault. It's not God's fault. I've preached his word. He's confirmed it with signs and wonders followed. He's sure not. He's raised to the dead. Now if you want him, come. There is a fountain filled with blood, strong tongue and obey, when sinners plunge beneath the blood, who's already guilty saved. If you're not sure, my friend, you just stand by a church tree. If you're standing by a membership, you better calm down. I may never see you again in this life. You and I want to make out before we meet again. You may never say anything about believing, but this is your time. God bless you, young man. That's right. Old convicted. God bless you, lady. Come on up. Come up out of your seat. Come on up. Remember, you have no option in life. You will die with one arm. But there's one thing sure. You're going to die. There's only one thing sure. You're going to die. Now, you better come to this office. 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 You better come your father has to get an answer for him appearing here on this platform right here in Shreveport, Louisiana, by the infallible sign of the Bible. Infallible sign that Jesus is raised to the dead. I'm his witness to say this, that he's calling you to come to the altar. Young and old, better than that, the Pentecost of Luther, who's the Lord of the world, come to the altar. There is a mountain filled with God by all heaven, that it was sinners to come. Will you come? Come on. All of you hit the trail down here to the altar. Quit looking at the television. Quit looking at the things in the world. Look at the crowd every night. That's right. Christ. Look who died for you. Look who paid the penalty. Look who was in your sin. Get away from the things in the world. That's right. I'm going to help you all the time. Come on now. Who else will come? Come on out. Everyone. Everyone. Now. If you got needed anything else from the Lord, come up to the altar right now. You know what you're about to do the Holy Ghost. Make your way to the altar right now. Make your way. You the fast way. Make your way. You the sports of that the Holy Ghost. You the Lord Jesus. Make your way to the altar. God bless you. Whoever you are, make your way to the altar now. Come to this place where as God's child, I've seen the Christ thing that He's here with open arms, ready to give every person, every place, and that 